Good morning, everybody. This is WSO. This is Steve Olson reporting. We're looking at, this is from my good friend Raymond in Chicago area, good old Chicago, Chi-Town, city with the big shoulders, Windy City. And we're at the Dan, Dan Ryan Expressway here, looking southwest, looking southwest. At 4.30 in the morning, my friend was uh, watching the news, watching the you know delays on uh, the Dan Ryan, which is the 9094 um, going into, into Chicago downtown. They call that the Dan Ryan. Um, by the way, if you ever go to Chicago, they don't call anything by its names. It's the Dan Ryan, it's the Eisenhower, it's all that. So you've got to figure out which one is which. But anyway, this is the Dan Ryan. And as you can see, we've got a huge red orb with a trail apparently behind it um, in Chicago yesterday morning. And, and this would have been just another orb picture for me. The difference, though, is it's showing up at the time, 4.30 a.m., and in the location that we would expect to see it based on the Dave Dobbs. I know I've been on the Dave Dobbs model a lot lately. But that's only because the Dave Dobbs model is, is, is working right now. It just so happens that the Dave Dobbs model coincides with the Gil Brazard model, and you couldn't find two more different people on the whole earth than Dave Dobbs and Gil Brazard. Yet, they're both gonna be at WSO Live on August 25th and 26th, because we're gonna get all points of view. What we did was we put together the best minds we could find to sit down, talk about this, give you the information, the end all be all, this is what it's gonna be kind of thing, the best we can and both these guys are going to be here but anyway so Raymond got me this picture and I think it's remarkable and I think it's noteworthy and I think it's freaking intense and so I just wanted to thank you Ray for being such a friend to me and to the channel next thing um, this is just that big I don't know do you call that a, is that a dust cloud on the ocean or is that a reflection from space I, I had to take a second look at it I didn't know okay then look at this little clip that we got, and this, this is, goes back to the historical stuff. This is from 2011, okay? And as you can see, it's the, it's the Stereo AH-I1 camera, right? And that's Earth, and I think that's Venus or something like that, but it's from 2013, check this out. Look at that. So in 2013, there was something in our skies, let's stretch this out a little bit, there was something in our skies, look at that, 2013 guys, and this is what we've been saying is that these things have been hanging around and doing their thing as this thing's making its way around the sun and blah, 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 and then people call us crazy and intensely stupid, but then I go to, and, and I can find a picture like this. So I don't think we're stupid guys. I don't think that we're I don't think we're misdirected. I don't think that we're being pulled. I think that we're finding stuff, and I'm not so sure that they didn't mean for us to find it. You know what I mean? Because you don't want it to be a, you don't want it to be a hard disclosure where nobody knew about it, and then all of a sudden you spring it on the world. You're gonna have to have some people ready to know it, and I think that's why they let us operate. Quite frankly, I really do. I think they let us operate because they have to have some disclosure, because they can't really afford for this to be a total mystery when it happens. Okay. Here's one of those fun photographs where one half of the sky is lit up and the other half of the sky is not lit up. <laughs> what the hell is that? You could say that's from that cloud there, I suppose, but um, I don't know. Look at this one. Same thing. Oops. Same thing, guys. It's this big, huge, unusual shadow. And we think that these are from planets, guys. That's what we think. But what do you think? That's what's more important. All right, let's, I want to take you to a couple of things here real quick to show you. The first thing I wanted to talk about was we will be in this general area um, uh, along the uh, Oregon-Idaho line there. I'm not going to say exactly where because I don't want to get hassled by anybody. But a lot of people are asking us what time is the eclipse going to happen, and this is the timing that it's going to happen. It's going to be in that 11.15 to 11.30 range, and we will be broadcasting live the whole time and we will be having our cameras on the sun we'll have our cameras on the other parts of the sky we're gonna have a couple observers with us and hopefully dave will be able to be with us dave's in the states dave dobbs and he's making plans to be with me for the eclipse so and then we're going to head out to minneapolis together to be part of the uh, wso live conference that i hope you all are going to attend you don't have to be in person to do the wso live event you can join via computer you don't have to travel um, and just click below for more uh information on that okay 
Um, and then we've got the typical, this is live, NASA from space. If you've never seen this, you can actually go on YouTube and have the live thing. But we have, always have some weird stuff going on by the sun. And uh, it's always fun to look at that thing. Radiation update today, guys. Nothing out of the ordinary, but a lot of people get worried about um, atmospheric radiation and things like that. Here's a great site that you can go to called the Radiation Network. Just Google it and you'll be able to find it. But what you'll see is we usually have really high radiation readings in here in the mountainous regions of, Cal of uh, Colorado. And I think the reason of that is because they are higher up altitude wise. But what you're looking for is if, the, if you see the little pointer going up like that, it's a mobile reading that's going up and then you've got the red and the yellow which is trending up and nothing looks like it's trending up. But if you ever see red on this map, that is something to pay attention to and you want to get out of the out of the um, weather you want to get under um, some protective uh, places if you ever see the alert thing go on but that I've never seen it go to alert stage yet the Schumann resonances we've been talking about get ready here we are again it's starting to crank up again it was really nice and mellow over the last couple of days but now it's starting to to crank up in case you don't know what the Schumann resonance is it's that frequency that the earth operates at 7.83 I think and any time that it goes up into the 40 Hertz 36 Hertz range and things like that here's what the medical community community would say to you look for heart problems look for you know the the heart activity increases during this time mental activity is affected so lots of personal stuff affected by the Schumann resonance is a scientifically monitored thing and again we're getting some high uh, frequency here today uh, CME guys CME alert we just had something bounce off the Sun um, and this is looking into the future cast and hopefully we'll get missed by the CME it looks like it started out it could maybe come towards the earth but uh, not likely at this stage of the game okay but right now we have a CME out there that's something to take a look at okay all sky cams we're seeing this now this is a very small planet but it's in this uh, in it, you'd say it's a cloud I get it but I, knowing what I, I'm looking at here, I think that this is an object, and it's in the same, it's in that same south, uh, southern uh, direction of the sky. Here's a great video by Christ is coming soon, and he caught this morning, Overgard, Arizona, caught all kinds of activity around the sun. Go check out this video; I think you'll like it. Here's another good one: Institute, Institute for Astronomy, another color camera. And again, I'll leave all these links below for you guys. But this is a good camera for viewing stuff. Again, we're seeing these objects up in that southeastern area of Hawaii. And then Matthew, my buddy, was doing some experiments with lens flares. Yeah, experimenting with lens flares around the sun. And you can see that there's objects back there, but you just can't get a clear take on it. You can't get a clear look at it because of the way that they have the Fresnel lenses and everything like that. But what you can do is if you play around the sun, and Kelly Hannibus does this, uh, a couple other folks do this, where they're actually able to catch things like the sun simulator and some of those reflections and different cool things like that. And then finally, a little bit of space weather. It's relatively calm compared to what it's been lately, but here's what I don't like. I don't like increased pressure making it past the magneto band and, and actually hitting the earth. I don't like that, and uh, I don't think scientists like it either. So we'll just kind of keep that in the back of our minds. So with that all said, back to the eclipse. Final words on the eclipse. We're going to be broadcasting live. Uh, we're going to start as early as possible, but our goal is to start at 8 a.m. Mountain Time and just basically have a live session while we're there watching the eclipse with the other people that we're with, and it will be fun, and hopefully Dave will be with us there. Big point on the eclipse. A lot of folks are buying these um, uh, eclipse viewers, okay, eclipse viewers. Um, and, and that's great. I, you know, I think everybody's excited about the eclipse. I think everybody wants to see the eclipse. I get it. Okay. It's cool. Problem is guys, they don't work if they're not used 100% properly. So I really need you guys to go out and do a little bit of research to make sure you don't hurt your eyes when you're looking at the eclipse guys. It's critically important that you have the right eye protection. And a lot of the stuff that's being sold out there right now is just pure BS. Please don't let your eyes get damaged in this event. Learn what it takes to keep your eyes safe, and we'll try to do a couple public uh, you know, service announcements later on. Don't forget to sign up for WSO Live, but most of all, right after the eclipse, we're going to have so much information to go over, and guess where we're going to go over it? 
That's right, at the WSL Conference on August 25th and 26th. So don't miss it. Sign up below. You can join via web. Probably one-third of the people are going to be on-site. And by the way, we don't have any seats left for the on-site in Minneapolis. It's all remote now. So we're sold out, and we just need you guys to uh, join via web and, then, and participate. You'll be able to chat. You'll be able to ask questions. And we're going to be analyzing the bejeebers out of this eclipse if anything came out of it. So this will be the, one, the one-stop shop to get all the information on Planet X, Nibiru, the eclipse, Black Sky, all of that stuff will be August 25th and 26th. I can't believe that the timing for this event is so perfect. Can you? God bless you all, and have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.